Well, it's Ken Shepherd again um, on a Friday. No other day. I don't do other days. My week only consists of a Friday. So there we go. Um, and it's a very interesting passage, this, because there's some things in it that um, uh, are strange. So we talk about Jesus and Beelzebub. What a, what a kind of title. And it is in Luke 11, 14 to 23. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke and the crowd were amazed. But some of them said by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he's driving these out. Others tested him and asked for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided among itself will be ruined and a house divided against itself will fall if satan is divided against himself how can his kingdom stand i say this because you claim that i drive it out by beelzebub now if i drive it out by as by um, demons by elzebub by whom do your followers drive them out so then be your judge if i drive out demons by the finger of god then the kingdom of god has come to you right think about that matey he says when a strong man fully armed guards his own house his possessions are safe but when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides his spoils he who is not against me is for me but who does not gather with me, scatters. Okay, we have a very interesting point at the beginning here because it says Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. Now, does that mean that everybody who um, is mute, i.e. they can't speak, has a demon? Of course it isn't. So Jesus was very discerning here um, I mean, most mute people, of course, are, are, are um, somehow become mute for some physical reason or they're born mute. Um, so Jesus was very discerning here and it's not a, an obvious kind of demonic situation. So that is quite interesting. Now, I, I had um, we had a very interesting um, situation in Uganda when we were there. Now, Ken Matthews, who has preached at the church, has got a son who has a Down syndrome, Danny, lovely young lad, um, very, very simplistic. Um, he do the most stupid things, but he is filled with the spirit and he, he worships and raises his hands and he, he makes his own music, um, which is kind of not anything that anybody would do, but there's something about him. And on one occasion, the local Uganda, we were working in a local Ugandan village and the Christians decided that actually Danny had a demon. So they were going to cast out demons. So they got round Danny and they prayed for him for about 20 minutes. Not quietly. And they, they went, you know, a bit berserk. And after some minutes, they went off. And Danny's comment, simplistic comment, was um, he said to his dad, what are these guys? Have these guys got a demon or something? I couldn't work out what they were doing. <laughs> it was just so, so wonderfully bizarre. Ken says, of course, he was born like that. But as a Christian and as we see his life, uh, uh, he may have this situation, but he has a dynamic and a care and a love and something that that um, is, is delightful about him. And there's no demonic situation there at all. Um, so that is quite an interesting scenario. Um, now, to go back to the passage, he says, some were amazed, but others disagreed and said the casting of the demon out is by Satan's power. Jesus points out that this is utterly stupid. I mean, I could read it again, but um, I won't read it again. It, uh, you know, of course he it's it, the whole argument is utterly stupid he cast how could he do that if he's he can't wreck him his own situation and 
uh, and basically he said it's absolute rubbish. Um, you see, they what what the situation is in the world and in in the the um, Pharisees etc. They had a policy in which their minds totally excluded any possibility of a God who could do miracles. Their minds were filled with this and their view was fixed. Whatever happened, um, that, that it must be, there must be another argument. You, you, and I, I, I went into Richard Dawkins' book and when I read that, um, I thought, good, I wonder what happens, what kind of um, bit he talks about when he comes to the resurrection. Um, so I, I was waiting for this and I thought, oh, but look, it looks as though he kind of deals with it oh, without hardly any arguing. What, what's he saying? And he said, um, actually, the resurrection is impossible because there's no supernatural. That was how he dealt with um, the resurrection. There wasn't any question of looking at anything which was evidence. There was a fixed view that it couldn't happen because there's no resurrection, no, no supernatural. Done. You know, you've done it. Well, no point going any further. Um, so there we go. Deep down, it's very interesting that science has the same view. They prove by looking at features, but when the features don't work, they find a different situation. Now, clearly evolution, we know evolution. Within species, we know there's evolution. And we find dogs, we find different dogs and all right, whatever, um, but not out of um, species. So, um, the scientific view is that everything started with one tiny form and over the millions and millions and millions of years um, we have developed from this bizarre situation and it's fixed very very fixed so um, but the, and it is quite interesting that you can um, you have there are places in the world and it's very simplistic this view because I can't do it in about two minutes. Um, you can find a fossil kind of life right from the beginning in certain places in the world. You can dig down and find soil that was um, implanted kind of millions and millions of years ago. So you've got a, a, a soil standard. Um, which can be seen in various places. And in it, there is a regular system going back to the early beginning of records. Um, but there are many issues in this. One is that um, birds, just birds is, is an issue here. So um, in this system of earth kind of, um, of seeing that the, there's fossils at all levels. But what actually happens with birds is that suddenly there were no fossils. There, there weren't any fossils kind of developing anything. Suddenly, at some stage, birds appeared suddenly, kind of fully developed. So the argument is, ah, yes, well, the, the issue here is, of course, for it does seem strange, but for a few million years, um, the fossils of birds didn't appear. We haven't found any. I'm sure we will at some stage, but there's no kind of development of birds shown anywhere. Um, so uh, that is, of course, the reason. It can't be that um, there was creation at a later stage or anything like that, because there, there isn't another reason. We've made this this view and of course we're right um so there's no other possibility and that is kind of the view but i'm told in scientific circles that lots of things are coming up now that actually do push people a bit and they're finding their arguments becoming more and more skewed so we hope that um things will become clearer 
and the whole situation of the fixed nature of evolution, um, starting with the Big Bang and no God, because we can't have a God, matey, because actually we might have to kind of uh, <laughs> do what he says. Um, so we're looking at a very interesting scenario um, from there, and that is probably where I will stop and leave you and make you think. Um, so there we go. <laughs>